nothing is absolute, thus that which is best practiced ability defining here as a measure will have the most significance or will prevail even to achieve a contrivance response outcome, i.e. non-absolute moral measure, right, even whether self-defined or collectively defined in this case, one would still rely on ability as the defining factor. So he's willing to do anything to achieve his goal, right? The means qualifier is instead of having control over military, etc., he has the death note. So you always need some kind of power to be able to do it. Defined measure is that he wants to reduce crime, sacrifices, family, nearness postulate we can use, um, sacrifices money, women, peace of mind, personal safety, right? Because he could get killed at any time. He's very self-aware of the nature of the larger process, which would be like, he says, if Kira is caught, he is evil. If he wins, he is justice. This is a perfect explanation of what an absolutist would say, right? Ability is defining, not, I guess he could also say means, but he doesn't use the means as a crutch here. Ability is defining, not morality. Even if I have to sacrifice my mind and my soul, it's worth it. So he says that very early on, which means by the end, even at the ending, you can say, okay, so he did what he intended to do, right? Whether it ends well or not, he was fully aware of the process the whole time. What if his God complex is not real? He acknowledges he isn't a God such that he needs to avoid getting caught or killed, right? A god wouldn't need to do that. But actually, a deeper <clears throat> form of psychological motivation. He needs to appeal to his ego in order to achieve the greater good, right? Reducing crime. Maybe he only pretends to think of himself as a god to himself to be able to make these sacrifices of his you know self-interest money family sex whatever it might be he shows very little interest in women doesn't show interest in women or means besides the death note that's tied to measure now we could poke a few holes in it like gets luck like anti-absolutist moments right where he shows great ego or gets lucky with naomi the fact that he meets her um has ryuk help find cameras wiretaps although even that to his credit entertains him and uses apples as bait so that is a form even of manipulating a shinigami we could also apply this to game theory and look at it like what disqualifies light for example does light really beat out well let's qualify his intelligence first and say like during yotsuba arc he proves he is at least as smart capable as l if not greater even L acknowledges this, right? This is without means of the death note. So the means argument goes out the window that, oh, he is, just has greater means. So Rem kills L, and yet Rem is merely treated as a piece on the board. Her bringing, I don't know if she's actually considered a her, but whatever, the death note to Misa greatly undermines light. So it's his strategy that ultimately kills both Rem and L. He gets credit the same way that L would get credit for catching light with the help of the worldwide police. This is at, at the beginning, right? It's whittled down by light's own strategy. But the emphasis is all on the ability of the people involved. In the same sense, it's not an excuse for L that he doesn't know that Rem loves Misa and would be willing to kill him. It's also not an excuse for Light that he doesn't know Mikami made a move on his own at the end and killed Takeda. Because in the context of this 
game theory, they are the players and Rem slash Mikami are the pieces. They should have accounted for this as they account for every other threat. So for example, L says, if I die in the next few days, right? I, if I die in the next few days, light is Kira. This is his way of dealing with the second Kira uh, and the Shinigami eye. So even when a new sort of mechanic is introduced, however, he deals with it, right? Just like any other piece on the board. So it's not a disqualifying factor. And so Misa is a liability as much as Rem is a help. If Misa hadn't been so sloppy and caught, Light wouldn't have needed, wouldn't have been under as much suspicion in the first place, right? So if you ask Light, Rem doesn't kill L, but Misa never gets Notebook. He would definitely choose that one. Right, because then he could figure out some other way to be L. It's not like he was waiting, hoping, oh, please, Rem, come down and kill L for me the whole series. He had to deal with Misa getting it, causes him a lot of headache, and then he eventually twists it to his advantage, right? So we can point out, like, on this point, both lost to ex both L and Light, lost to external factors outside their own awareness. So that's how the game theory game theory defined by two absolutists who cannot directly lose they can't just be beaten arbitrarily like oh he just slipped up oh he just got lucky they lose by things they couldn't have been aware of no way for l to know about rem's infatuation with misa no way for light to know about mikami's improvised action in the moment in fact, Light accounts for the outcome that leads to his defeat, right? Not only does he not need Mikami to write Takeda's name, he goes out of his way to write it on his scrap to remove the need. Again, we're using that term. He removed, that's actually the ultimate validation too. Like he removes the need for Mikami to write the name. Mikami writing the name is what led to his defeat. And so all Mikami has to do is sit in the bathroom and take a shit and light wins. And there's a lot of other things like he could have tested it. But so Mikami doesn't have to do anything, but he does it anyway because he's not an absolutist. He doesn't account for all the factors. He's just a piece on the board. The Mikami piece is flawed in one way. We could look at the sort of other notebook users, right? Or, or we could define the value of each piece. Other, uh, we, let's stop the underline. Other notebook users. Misa has her limits, right? Misa is sloppy, too direct. Higuchi, it has ulterior motives, right? Yotsuba, light wants the world to be aware of his existence only weakness but deliberate for example could simply kill criminals with only suicides from the beginning or make people kill each other so then you wouldn't really suspect oh there's some magical being killing magical force killing people you would just say you know people are just killing each other like they always do or they're just killing themselves right there would be no way to prove anything else, but he specifically wants them to know. So we can kind of qualify it that way. In other words, the means of having the notebook is not absolute and is defined instead by the user and their own abilities. It simply qualifies the story as Light wouldn't be able to do killings otherwise, right? So it's simply the tool. It's not necessarily what makes him so capable. Mikami's piece reads, copies Light's movements. Thus, Light should have accounted for this fact even in the Takeda case. He doesn't, thus he loses, right? It's his fault, not Mikami's fault, because he's the player on the board. Mikami is just the bishop or the rook or the whatever, you know? He's just a piece on the board. That's how at least the series is written as far as I can interpret it. And I think that writer would stand by that because otherwise you could just say oh well it's not a very satisfying ending because mikami just makes a mistake and light loses that's not very fun this is a good way to make it kind of more pop culture friendly or whatever disqualifying factor light kills lind l taylor right this is a major move this could be seen as a non-absolutist 
tendency. However, his defined measure justifies this on two levels, right? One, he cannot get caught or the measure fails. And two, he specifically wants people to know what's happening. So they fear it and don't commit crimes. His measure is not simply to get away, to kill people and get away. It is to actively reduce crime and influence actions. For example, so we're not talking about the morality of it. We're talking about it's, he says, it's too early to make these kinds of claims when Mikami tries to kill lazy people, etc. So it doesn't mean he's against the idea. It just means he wants to do it later on when he has gets rid of Nier and Mello and whatnot. Why doesn't L just kill Light and L Light recognizes its opponent's abilities and tendencies, right? Once Light is made aware, it was kind of like my initial impression to Light, right? At the beginning, I said, oh, who is this upstart kid? Good at school, but so what? He's going up against going up against the world's greatest detective, but then he proves his own intelligence many times over to be equal, if not greater. Once Light is made aware of L's presence and intelligence, he treats him very differently. He underestimates him at first during the Lind L. Taylor situation. Once he accounts for his opponent, he is able to match him and shows himself to be either equal or superior. 